Oh, shalom, shalom. Okay, let's. Uh, okay, this is what we talk about when we talk about dealing with weight. You see, this is some of what we want to discuss in these series of um, lectures and, and vids. This is stacking papers right here. This is a basic study, you know. So when you come to class or when you're learning or you're studying, it's definitely important to be prepared. But this is the real papers. This is the real papers. This is the real weight we got to deal with. All right, so let me just lay this down right here. And let us continue. Shalom once again. Shalom Ras Tefari. Ene Ras Yadinos Tefari. Name. I am Wendem Yadon, or Ras Ayadonis to some. Now, we had left off in the last uh, vid, or one of the last vids that we um, recorded and published on our Ethiopian World Net, Ilunet channel on the YouTubes. We were speaking on Hebrew, on the Hebrew, our mother tongue, or our mother language. And we're speaking on the Alpha Bait, the 22, the 22 um, primary letters of the Hebrew, or we can say the Hebrew, the Hebrew alphabet. Now, the 22. Why is the 22 so important? Well, first of all, coming from a Judeo-Christian perspective, as most of our people, um, whether consciously or unconsciously, whether they are like us who have come to that enlightenment and acceptance of their Ethiopian Hebraic roots or their black Jewish or black Hebrew Israelite or Ethiopian Hebrew or elect Rastafari, then it's based on the B-I-B-L-E. It's based on the Bible. Now, when we speak of the Bible, what's very interesting, this is what you go on in, um, what do you call it, uh, Sunday schools. How many of your Sunday schools even just, just teach the children the basic, the basic um, alphabet? We talk about the alphabet, and you think we mean A-B-C. But check this out for a moment. This is the 22 to 22 of the Hebrew alphabet. And the Hebrew alphabet was like, you know how they call it, black English? You know how they say black English or Ebonics? Well, in the ancient world, since Gutters, the Ethiopic is at the very root, right? This was like um, Hebrew or Hebrew Gutters. This was like shorthand. This was like the primary, if you boil it down, it's like when you boil it down to its, its, its basic root, this is what we have in our Hebrew alpha bait. Now, some say alpha bait, alpha, they go to the, 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 the Greek and say, well, like alpha omega, so alpha means first. And then they say, well, bait means house, and in the Hebrew, bait means house. So this is our first house. This is our first house. This is what we call it our mother tongue, our mother language. And it begins with alef, alef, which equals the alpha. And the next second letter is bait, is bait. Bait or bait, right? Bait is house. So we have alef, bait. Alpha bait, alef bait, alpha bait. Now, for those who have a good uh, Bible, and the Bible, as you should know, that we recommend is the Schofield Study Bible, at least a good King James um, version of the Bible, as a as a basic as as a basic Bible. That doesn't mean that it should be the only Bible in your studies that you will need to really grow in understanding or overstanding. However, it's a good starting point, and this is why we keep recommending the Schofield Reference, the Schofield Study Bible, and if you've watched these vids before, we always point you to our website because you can download the PDF and some other freeware and shareware, and you can utilize it on whatever type of mobile or computer device that you have. Now, if we go to the Psalms, let's go to Psalms for a moment. We pointed this out in the last vid on Hebrew, our mother tongue, our mother language. 
and when you go to Psalm 119. Now, Psalm 119, technically speaking, they call Psalm 119 an acronistic, an acronistic um, psalm. And there's other acronistic um, psalm. Well, because acronistic basically means that every every um, verse or a, a, such a number of verses begins with that very same um, letter according to the order of the Hebrew alphabet. It's something like in English if we say something like um, A, a man walked across the street. B, because he wanted to go to the store. C, crazy as it is, this is acronistic. You know, just giving you an example, when we say A, a man walks to the store. B, because, and C, crazy. So it's similar to that in the Hebrew. So when we go to Psalm 119, and let's, um, let's put this up here again, Psalm, Psalm 119. Ain't that something? Psalm 119. Look at that. 911. Uh-oh. Something going on here, right? But it's the true illumination. It's the true light. This is the true light. Not that false light that you call so-called illuminati. Not that false craft you call Freemasonry. But it's, this is the root. This is, this is the foundation. No sure foundation can be laid. Now, Psalm 119 if you go to Psalm 119, you'll find that Aleph, Aleph, every eight verses. So when you go Aleph, count eight verses to the eighth verse. At the ninth verse, we have Beit. So from nine, you go, um, you go uh, eight more verses. And when you get to the 17th, right, you have Gimel. So 17 to 24th verse. Then when you get to 25th, you have Dalet. And then as we go along, let's just show you this as we go along let's show you this you go Aleph right where we began the first verse of Psalm 119 Aleph it says blessed are they Asher Asher Asar Osar Asher blessed or happy are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord or of Yahweh of Egeziavihir, of the sustainer. Then when we go to the ninth verse, we have bait. Bait. It says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. And then when we go to the 17th verse, we have Gimel. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Then when we go forward to the 25th verse, we have Dalet, Dalet. My soul cleaveth to the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. Then when we go to the 3-3, three, three, the 33, or the 33rd verse, we have Hey, Hey. Teach me, Abitu. Teach me, Adoni, the way of thy statutes and I shall keep it to the end, or I shall keep it to the perfection. So this is the 33rd, the, the 33rd verse. Then we go to the 41st verse, we have vow, or wow, wow. We, it says, let thy mercies come also to me, Adoni, even thy salvation according to thy word. Now already you should notice something. Very, that's very consistent. Something that's very consistent is that the word, the word, the word, word up. Yes, but what is that word that is up? You know what I'm saying? What is that high word? What is that true word? What is the true word? When we get to, now let's go on to the seventh. The seventh, just to, just to demonstrate right here. At the 49th verse, we have Zane. Zane, and this is the Hebraic of it. Zane. Remember the word to thy servant, upon which thou hast, thou hast caused me to hope. Right? Remember the word. Remember the word. 57th verse, we have chet. Chet. It may seem as chet, 
but it's not chest, it's chet, chet, right? We have chet, and it says, Thou art my portion, O Adoni. I have said that I would keep thy words. Then when we go forward to the 65th verse, we have tes, tes, right, or tet. It says, Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Adoni, according to thy word. As we keep saying, the word, the word is very, very important. So in order to, let's break it down. Words are made up of what? Letters, right? And the letters have sounds. So if we build from the foundation, we have to learn the alphabet. We have to learn the letters and the sounds, the word, sound, and the power. So now let's go forward to the 73rd. The 73rd, right? And now we're going to move to... We have at the seventy at the seventy third, right? Let's, let's see where where we where where, where test, right? The seventy third. Um, okay, that, that's what we were looking at. That it says Job. If you look in the old King James, it says Job. The, there's no J sound in the Hebrew, right? All these, not in the conventional Hebrew. It's Yod. It's Yod or Yod, Yod, which means the right hand, as in Ben Yamin, Ben Yamin, son of the right hand. The right hand is that black power fist. Remember the black power fist? That's Jod, Yod, or the hand of God. And this is this letter right here, one of the smallest of the letters. It's Likul, but it's Talawa. It says, Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. So you see right here the Yod. Remember Yod, Yod is the hand. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding. Give me overstanding that I may learn thy commandments. Then we get to the 11th Fidel, which we find at the 81st verse. And we have Kaf. Kaf. My soul fainteth for thy salvation. But I hope in thy word. I hope in thy word. Not in anything else, but we hope in the word of Jah, in the word of the King of Kings and his Christ. And moving forward now to the 12th of the Hebrew alphabet, the first house. The 12th is Lamed. Lamed. It says, forever, Avirtu, forever. Adoni, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever is the word settled in heaven. Although they may try to mistranslate and do this and that, the word is already written in heaven. The word is already witnessed in the stars, as we've been touching on in other videos and hopefully can go into some more detail on that. But now what we left off in the previous video was at the 13th. The 13th, and the 13th is me. Now, if you go back to that video and see how we, how we uh, drew the meme, we drew the final meme. In case some might think that the meme look a little bit like the Samic, they do look a little bit alike. So you see there's some similarities. And if you want to see it a little more clearer, and it might not be in your Bibles, just do Hebrew alphabet, look it up on the Internet, you know, Google it, get some images, download it so you can see it more clearly and can study it, you know, can study it there. These are only, remember, it's only 22. 22. Start out with the first 11 and start with the next 11. Now, the Royal Amharic, the pure language, the Amarinya, is 33. 22 comes before 33. And if you don't learn the 22, it's going to be more difficult for you to learn the 33. And this is one of the reasons why it might be because you're already trying to go to a higher level and are not attaining what is the first, the foundational, the, the foundational and the groundational. And, and besides, you have it here in your own Bibles, right, right in, in, the, in, in the King James or the English Bibles. And Psalm 119 is a good, the 119, which is emergency, I think, in the U.K. It's like 911 here. They say 119, I think, in England. But it's basically um, a sign of emergency. And this psalm right here is an emergency. 
emergency song um, in more ways than one. But it, the focus of the psalm is the law, is, is, is Torah, and is showing us our proper role and responsibility as, as, as servants, as servants not of man, not of the white man or the cracker or Willie Slick Willie or whatever. But, see, when we, when we stop serving the Almighty, the Almighty said, all right, you don't want to serve me? Well, look how you're serving man. The Almighty says, if you don't want to keep my law, look how you keep the law of the Gentiles. Yeah, they whip you, they beat you, but you humble and you follow their law. You don't get no justice. You don't get no peace because you're not supposed to. It's supposed to be a teachable moment. You understand? It's a teachable moment. And, and these things we're experiencing even in 2012, even with the Trayvon Martin incident and many other via two incidences, should waken folks up to who we are and where we're really at. We've got to point this book out once again, The Valley of the Dry Bones. Get a copy of it. You might be able to find a, um, a, a free PDF on Scribd or uh, somewhere out there on the Internet. If you can buy a copy and purchase your own copy, this was only ten ninety five. dollars um, please do. You know, go to some black bookstores in your area, patronize them, ask them to order it. You understand? Go to our website. You understand if you want to order through us. But the main thing, wherever you get it from, you know, you could go by trailways. You could go by whatever. Make sure you just get the. Make sure you get a copy. In other words, and study it for yourself. It will explain a lot of what's going on right now. It really will explain everything. You know, it will point you in the right direction, giving you some of the facts. So when you open this Bible, you can see it with open eyes. You know what I'm saying? You can, you're no longer blind, no longer a lost sheeple, but become one of the almighty, one of Jah's people. So let's go on from Meme. From Meme. Meme, the 97th verse, it says, Oh, how love I thy law. See, when you, whenever you hear Torah, I mean law, it's really Torah. It's speaking of the Torah. Yeah, like you probably heard about the Jews or the other Jews, but don't you know that you're a Hebrew or a Hebrew, if, 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 if you please? Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation. It is I and I meditation all the day. Let me ask you, do you meditate upon Jah law? You could go about your work and your business, but do you think about his, is his law, is the law of Jah? Your meditation? Well, that might explain why, you understand, all this tribulation that we're experiencing as a people and even individually because we're meditating too much nonsense, too much temporal BS. We're meditating the curse instead of meditating upon the blessing, you know, and whatever you focus on, that's what you increase, you know, whatever you focus on. And this is what we should focus on. And, and David and David to Huti explains this very much to us even here. So the 97th mean, which is the 13th, which is the 13th of the Hebrew alphabet, it says, Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation or meditation, if you please, all the day. The 14th is noon, and we find that at, at verse 105. Not 105 in park, you understand? Not 105 on your dial, but 105, the 105th verse. It says, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light and an illumination, the true illumination to my path. This is noon, noon, right? Noon. The 15th is Samek. Samek, Samek. And we find this at verse 113, at the 113th verse. And it reads, I hate vain thoughts. Yeah, vain thoughts. I and I hate. You can call us a hater if you want. We hate vanity. Yes, we hate the vanity of Babylon. We hate the insanity. But David teaches us, I hate vain thoughts. But thy law... Thy Torah, do I love? Do I love? The 16th is Oin. 
eyeing. You know what eyeing is? Eyeing is the eye. Eyeing. That's why it looks like, you know, it looks like a little like that, but in the Ethiopic, it looks just like the eye. You know what I'm saying? Eyeing. 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 It means eye, and it also means a, a, a fountain. It says, I have done judgment and justice. At verse 121, I have done judgment, have done judgment, not, not, not begging the Gentiles for justice and for peace, but when you know Jah law and his servant, you can do judgment and justice. Leave me not to mine oppressors, or as Rastafari speak, leave I and I not to I and I down presses, because they're not pressing us up. You understand? They're not pushing us up, pressing us up. They're pressing us down. They are down presses, not up presses. I have done judgment and justice. That's, that's, that's a powerful meditation if you think about it, especially in times like these. We're talking about, oh, give us justice and, and hell, justice. We want justice. And you're begging the same ones who brought your ancestors and are upholding the same system. And right here, justice says to us, I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to my down presses. And there's more in that in those eight verses. So remember, we said it's broken up by eight, by eight, by eight verses going through these 22 um, primary Hebrew or Hebrew alphabets. So we're here at the 16th. Now we're moving to the 17th. And the 17th, we find this at, at verse 129. At the 129th verse, it says, Thy testimonies are wonderful. Therefore doth my soul keep them. Therefore does my soul. And what's the soul? The soul is not so much the music you listen to. It may stimulate your soul. It's not the food that you eat. That may also touch your soul. But the soul is, is the mind. You understand? Is the feeling, the thought, the emotions. And when we're on the right brain side, you understand? Or the thoughts. You understand the thoughts and the psychology, the thinking process on the left brain side. That's the soul. So therefore doth my soul keep them. My soul protects them. Protects what? Just testimony. See, this is, this is what we're lacking as a people because we don't have that. All this downpression of the downpressers and the enemies and the haters of Jah. This is what causes... I and I people to have the high blood pressure. This is what causes all the insanity, all the murder, the violence, the, the broken families and everything else because what testimony do we keep? What we hear on TV, what we hear silly godless people say or not knowing who we really are as a people so we're not turning to our true source, our true light. Thy testimonies are wonderful. Therefore doth my soul keep them. Our soul is to keep it, to protect it. Verse 137, which brings the 18th um, letter, the 18th letter is, is Sadai or Sadi. Sadi. Sadi, some say Sade. Sadi, Sade, tomato, tomato, Sade. Adi, it says, righteous, righteous art thou, Adoni, righteous art thou, O father, his father, father of I and I house, and in my father's house there are many mansions, if it wasn't so, I wouldn't tell you because he wouldn't tell me if it was not so. Righteous art thou, Adoni, and upright, upright are thy judgments. You see, it's not like Jah's judgments are upright and some of the Gentiles' judgments. No, no, no. Only Jah's judgments are upright, are straightforward. And so when we're dealing with Babylon and looking for justice and like looking for love in all the wrong places, we're looking for justice and peace in all the wrong places. Let's go to verse 145, and we're going to go to 19th. Verse 145 is Oath. Oath, oath. They have a K here. It should really be a Q sound. Oath, oath. 
It says, I cried with my whole heart. Not half hearted, you know, not you know, like the, you see those things where people crying and there's no tears and stuff like that. No, no, no. I cried with my whole heart, with my holistic heart, with my entire heart. Hear me, Adoni. I will keep thy statutes. And a very important statute is coming up. A very important spiritual ordinance, sometimes called a religious ordinance, and that's Fasika. That's Pesach. Pesach 2012. That's, that's this year's Passover, coming up on the eve of the six, the, the, the master's evening meal, Adoni, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's evening meal, otherwise known as the Last Supper and the Passover. This is an important statute. And hear this verse. I cried with my whole heart, hear me, Alberto. Hear me, O Lord, O Father, his Father, Father of the house. I will keep, I will, I will keep it, I will protect, I will keep thy statutes. Not forget them, but I will keep them. Oath. The 20th is Resh. You know what I'm saying? Resh. Or Ethiopically, Aris, uh, which refers to the Aras, which refers to, it refers to the head, but also, Resh can mean to forget. Now check, check out the word sound of this. One, five, three. It says, Consider mine affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget thy law. Check that out. The prayer of the righteous, of the holy ones, is consider mine affliction. Consider our affliction. Notice what portion of the, the scripture we're reading right now, um, the Torah portion. We just have completed the book of Exodus. Now we're in to the, the, the second um, Torah portion from the book of Leviticus, or Vayikra, or the Orit Ze Lewawiya. And the Beit Israel, much like the lost sheep, just like Negroes and blacks in the West, are in affliction, but they don't really recognize it. Why? Because they forgot in Jalor. You understand? They're not living according to Jah law, so they're not living according to Jah life. But once they wake up, once they recognize, then the psalm comes to life. It's no longer the dead letters. You see, the letter of the law is death, but the spirit of the letter is life. So consider the spirit of, the, of these letters right here. Consider mine affliction and deliver me and save me for, for the reason I do not forget thy law. I don't forget thy Torah, and we should not forget the Torah. And this is why we study the Torah, and we should teach our children the Torah, and we should live our lives according to Jah law. And, and know this, all this other stuff would disappear like, we'll, we'll be like, where's, where's the wicked boy again? Where, where are these wicked, what happened to them? Where, where are them gone? <laughs> Some of y'all don't accept it as true, and that's part of the problem. You know, you'll believe the lies of the enemies, but don't accept the truth from a, a, a son of Jah. But verse uh, 161, 161 is sheen, sheen, or seen, but really sheen, right? Sheen, at verse 161, it says, princes, princes, or false rulers, princes have persecuted me. Without a cause. So we, you know, black folks, even now with the Trayvon Martin thing and a lot of these other racist and, you know, um, atrocities, this is like a genocide, it's like a holocaust, but people be too afraid because if you knew you were a black Jew, a Hebrew, you understand, you, would, you wouldn't feel afraid to say this is a holocaust because then you could break it down. And the Gentile will have to do just like Revelation says. You know, the Jews who call themselves Jews, they have to bow down to nine and I feet and recognize that Jah has loved I and I. Plain and simple, you'd be fulfilling the word of Jah if you only knew. But it says, princes have persecuted me without a cause. Without a cause, you, you know, you want to find why they're doing this, why that happened. Jah already told you, Lord Sheep. You understand? Know bad, bad, I already told you that princes will persecute. Uh, so without a cause, we think there's a good reason why they killed that boy. We could say because he's black. Well, why they do that? It, it already tells you princes have persecuted I and I without a cause. But 
On the other hand, I heart, my heart standeth in awe of thy word. Do our people's hearts stand in awe of your word? I mean, you know, it's amazing. If somebody get a new car or some clothing or walking with some type of gal or guy, and people are, oh, wow. I mean, they're on awe of that. If they win the lottery, you understand? Oh, wow. You understand? But they don't, they, don't, they don't respond that way, you understand, when they're studying Torah, when they're studying the scriptures. You hear you know what I'm saying? And you have to think about that. Even I and I have thought about that. I said, wow, people for material things are all in awe of it. Call it wonderful and perfect. But when do we get that feeling when we're reading and studying Jah word and studying who we are and our true divine heritage? Do we get that same feeling? Now, I, I recognize years ago that I did. I wasn't, I, it was a little bit, but I wasn't really getting that same and so you have to really think on it. You have to meditate on that and meditate on his word until I can say, now I do get that vibe. More so people show, up, oh, somebody got a car, or somebody got some material thing or whatnot like that. Well, that's cool. That's all right. But it's nothing to be ooh and awing about. You know, I see the blue sky and, and the creation of Jah. You understand? Well, I can be awed about that. You know what I mean? Because that's, the word reminds me of what to be awed of and for what reason. So it shows us that we got our whole, you know, our whole situation is upside down, you know. And there's a very good explanation for why we're in the valley of the dry bones, you understand, the conditions that face black people in the Americas. And the more we talk about this, you understand, um, you know, the more we talk about this, it's interesting because we talked a little bit about that that Trayvon Martin um, situation, the hoodie, you, you know, some of y'all probably know. And we see it in the media and different postings and stuff out there as we just do some, you know, searching on the Internet or whatever. We see people picking up on everything except the real heart of the message. You know, they'll pick up on all the other aspects of, of, of the particular case except the real heart of the message. And the real heart of the message is that we're the lost sheep of the Beit Israel, and those pastors and preachers are in, 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 in danger. It's a warning to them because they're not teaching I and I people the truth. You understand? They are part of the problem and in Jah's name, and they're going there saying that God has sent them, but the message that they give us is not from this word. It's not concerned. I mean, listen to them. I mean, I mean, listen to the out there talking off the top of their head. There's no scripture. There's no Jah is in it. And Isaiah says this right here. Just this is for your Negro passing. But that's part of the problem. I hate to say it. The majority, not all of them. There's a few of them that know the truth or have woken up, and they're getting hell from 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 the other pastors and preachers that prefer to serve Baal. Um, the lamb. But when we go right here, it tells us, it tells us right here um, that if they speak not according, well, if they speak not according to it says to the law and to the testimony, Isaiah chapter eight verse twenty. To the what? To the law. This is what Psalm one nineteen speaks of. You know, referring to the law, His word. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word. It is because there is no light. There's no light in them. So, you know, these they could be black. You could be my color, but not my kind. When they come out there, you hear them yakking, yakking about the federal government, this and that, but nothing about John's word. And then they won't call them Reverend this and Reverend that. And see, most of the folks don't really complain about it because they don't know any better. You know what I mean? You know, they've, they, they've, they've been born blind. And nobody's opened their eyes. But we pray that Jah opens their eyes. If not this persecution and suffering and holocaust and genocide that's coming. They, it's sad, but they might have to experience more at the hands of the enemy before they even begin to wake up. I mean, how we know this is what's what Jah said. Jah said if they want to continue to turn away, you understand? And he sends his ones and ones out there, I and I and others out there, you know, and if they, if they, they continue, they're going to suffer more. But let's go to the penultimate or the, or, the, or the conclusion of this right here. And it's the 22nd. The 22nd is, is, is Tav. Tav. That's interesting. Tav. Tav or Tau. 
because if you look in the archaic, um, the archaic uh, Hebrew, the older Hebrew, or some call Phoenician, so forth and so on, you'll see that um, it's like a circle with an X in it. It's a circle. The older is a circle with an X in it. And like if you look in the Royal Amharic, it's like a T. It's like a cross, this one right here. And it basically means a mark. It basically means a mark, just like the sign of the cross right here is a mark. And then there's some prophetic um, scriptures that speak about those who don't have that mark on them, you understand, are going to be chopped down, they're going to be cut down. So it's kind of interesting right there, you know, that Tav is a particular kind of mark. Let's, let's hear what 169 says, verse 169. It says, let my cry come near before thee, Adoni. Give me understanding. Give me overstanding according to thy word. Not just, don't just give me comprehension, but give me comprehension according to your word. You understand? I want to comprehend your word and the reality of your word. So we just went through, just briefly right here, this acronistic, this acronistic um, psalm, one of the longest psalms. Psalm 119. Now, Psalm 119, you know, saying Psalm 119 is 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 very very uh, is very very uh, significant. It's, it's very very significant. Um, there's some footnotes down here, but we'll get into that a little bit um, later. Um, but let's go over this once once again, and we'll go through the sabbatical um, the sabbatical portion for this week as we prepare for um, our Black Lord and Savior's uh, um, evening meal, what is known as the Last Supper or Fasica or Pesach. So let's go through this once again. We have Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Baleth, Hey, Wow, Zayn, Chet, Tet, Yod, Kaf, Lamed, Mim, Nun, Samech, Ein, Fe, or Pe. Did we touch on Fe or Pe? Please let me, let us not have, 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 uh, that is interesting. Actually, yeah, 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 we did, we did, we did. My testimonies are wonderful. Just wanted to make sure. Okay, let's go from here. Ein. Fe or pe, uh, zadi or zade, kof, resh, shin, tau or tav, tav. So this is our this is our a to z or alpha to omega or aleph to tav. This is the twenty two. This is the twenty two. We'll suggest this. Start with the first eleven. Right. Start with the first eleven. Learn these these eleven. You know, and learn it in connection with the scriptures. It's important to learn it in connection with the scriptures. As we try to point out some of the key words like yod, yod refers to hands. Um, some of the other key words like blessed is is asher. You saying blessed is asher, and um, I can go through that as well. But anyway, the Hebrew alphabet is very important for us to reclaim the Hebrew alphabet in the Nabad Beit and in our um, Amharic literacy and in the society or in, in the basic churchical studies is, is very, very important because there's, there's much of the, of the scriptures that needs to be understood you know what I'm saying, by understanding the words. And once you begin to become more familiar and even teaching your children to become more familiar, it won't be like a roadblock. It won't be like, you know, like an obstacle. You understand? But it's more as an invitation. Like we said, there's much more we probably can go into, but we're eager to get into the preparation for this uh, uh, Fasica, this Pesach. And um, once again, let's go through this. This is the A, Aleph, B, Beit, G, Gimel, D, Dalet, H, Hay. W, wow, or Ashkenazi, um, Euro Jews say Vav, but correctly it's wow. Z, Zain, Ch, 
uh, K-H-C-H sound, chet. Hard T sound, eight. Y sound, yod. K sound, soft K sound, kaf. L sound, lamet. N sound, mean. N sound, noon. S sound, samech. Hard A sound, oin. P or F sound, pe or fe. TS or TZ sound, tzadai or tzadi, tzadai, tzadai, tzadai. You know, it almost looks like that. It looks like that type of uh, um, animal. Or, there's another good book right here that we want to show you. This this might be a, a good investment for ones and ones um, that we wasn't able to get into. We'll show you in just a moment. So we have Sada 18. Q sound, kof, kof, kof. R sound, resh, resh, right? SH sound, sheen. And soft T sound, tau or tav. Right now, this is the book we we're speaking about right here. This is um, John Lamb. This 1835 book right here by um, John Lamb is called Hebrew Characters Derived from Hieroglyphics: The Original Pictures Applied to the Interpretation of Various Words and Passages in the Sacred Scripture and especially of the history of the creation and the fall of man. Or should we say the fall of the black man, to put it more specific, because through that one fall of that one man and everybody else, and we know from the genetics that it all comes out of Africa, it all comes from the dominant gene, and therefore from the black gene. So this is just being scientific. You see, the science will clear away a lot of the superstition, a lot of the doubt. This book here is by John Lamb, D.D., um, I guess a divinity doctor, master of Corpus Christi College, Cambridge. And this is the cover of the book right here. This is the book we're talking about right here. All right, take a look. Now, see, some people will see that symbology and start talking all this occultic stuff. Occultic means that it's just been hidden. How much has been hidden? You know, go look on the internet. You can see all that stuff. A lot of that stuff was known years ago, but they hid it. You know what I'm saying? They hid it from you. Now, this is why this particular, um, let's just show you a little bit of this, how this can be a good uh, introduction even for the children right here. You see, that's the Aleph there. That's the Aleph. You see how it has a, as a man? It's the outline of a man. Some would tell you it's an ox, according to some linguists. But John Lamb, what he does is basically point to the oldest writing, which is out of ancient Egypt, and goes to a comparison. That's bet, or bait. You know what I'm saying? That's the B sound. You know what I'm saying? Showing and linking it with the scriptures, linking it with the Bible, but giving it in a very um, receivable you know what I'm saying? A receivable way. What is this? This is this is uh this is this gimel right here? This is, is this gimel, yeah, this is the ga or the gimel. You know what I'm saying? The gimel right there. Right? And you can this is the dilate. You can see the lips, the dilate or closed mouth, dilate. Right? And then you can see right here, that's the 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 hay. That's the hay sound right there. And you see how it's derived, and there's there's more scriptures. You know, he points out some. It's extraordinary actually reading such a work, because what many of us, once we start to research and study, we made the link. You know, just just as a matter of truth, made made the link and reality between the um, the Hebrew and the hieroglyphics. And here we find an extraordinary. That's the Zion, the Zain. The Zion, that's the wow. You see the wow, like the feather, the feather of Ma'at, right there, the wow, as in the Yahweh, Yahweh, Yah, right? And then we have right here the Zain, the Zain, the, the Z, 
the Z sound. And then over here, we have the Chet. See how the Chet is the Ka? You see the Ka or the, the embracing arms, the Ka? You see that right there? Okay. And let's just go through this. Um, here's the Mean. See the Mean, like the Spade. They have the meme as a spade right there. All right, you see that? Okay, and then we have the yod. See how the yod right here? The yod. They're likening it to an I in a sense right here. But there's, like I said, there's more details to this. And God is in the details. So I would strongly suggest check it out. You know, check it out for yourself. This right here. Is is the which one is this? This is the the, the cough, the cough right there. Okay, All right. That right there is the lamed. The lion is linked to the lamed. You know the lamed, or some say the lamb letter, the lamed. Right, and here we have the the what. Is it? This is um okay, a little bit more right there. All right, so you get the basic hopefully you get the basic idea while we're recommending this particular rare it's a rare book. But now that we know more, I'm sure when this author brought this forward, some of the the higher criticism of the Eurocentric scholars and the bibliolators probably tried to dismiss it. This is one reason why we haven't heard about this particular book, but it's amazing now that they've learned more and found more buried in the sand that they're beginning to recognize, you know, recognize how accurate some of these ones were. But the problem with a lot of these ones is that they were pointing to Egypt, which clearly, you understand, which clearly is an ancient black or African uh, culture and civilization. So we will highly recommend if ones want to seriously study um, the Hebrew and, and to see the, the, the connection with the sun coming out of Egypt, you know, where Yahweh says, I've caught my son out of Egypt. Um, this book right here is highly recommended, and you can get it from our uh, we've republished this, so you can find this on on the www.lojsociety.org, and it's one of our Rastafari book club books, as well as a recent book that yours truly has written right here, Ethiopic, the first language. You understand, which kind of goes a little bit broader. You understand, goes a little bit broader in linking the different languages vis-a-vis -vis ancient Ethiopic to really prove that if there was a first language or a, a, a parent language, that Ethiopic would fit the criterion, the description, the evidence is all there for Ethiopic being that first um, language or that ancient language from the language that we have available today and language that we know about. When we look at the oldest of them, clearly we see the Ethiopic is, is, is the oldest as well as tracing words, you know what I'm saying, to their, their roots and usages. But Ethiopic, of course, has, hasn't been given much credit because of the prevailing um, psychosis of, uh, of, of racism, you know, of Gentile white Western world racism, because that's what most people have you know, likes and dislikes and prejudices. But nothing compares to the, 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 the demonic, the demonic mind. It sounds like the mind of the devil, basically, was, was incarnate, you understand, among the Gentiles that produced this awful racial situation. And I and I, many of us, we find it offensive when they even want to say about our vids and others out there who are just exposing the truth that somehow we're being um, so-called racist because we're exposing the truth and also telling them how much we dislike their oppression and their, their downpression 
and their brutality and their inhumanity and their demonic, their demonic genocide or attempts to genocide us because of our blackness. You know, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's something that we, we will prefer not to speak about it. Some people say, well, why you guys have to talk about the black stuff? It don't matter if you white, black, yellow, or green or something. But that's, they're not dealing with reality. You know what I mean? Um, let us confront the issue. You know, tell the, tell the white Jews, stop talking about being Jewish and see how far that will get you. You know what I'm saying? But be that as it may, this is an introduction to our mother tongue, our mother tongue. And we highly recommend, especially if ones are interested in learning, learning it and teaching it to their children, the Hebrew character derived. Um, it's called Hebrew hieroglyphics. We actually have sort of renamed it a little bit, he, Hebrew hieroglyphics, Hebrew character derived from the hieroglyphics. Go to www.lojsociety.org. And um, I think they'll make an excellent sort of a children's book or those who have ideas um, towards um, creating, you know, um, teaching modules for our children. It's, it's very important that we can teach our youths, you know, the alphabet, and they will be much more um, able to deal with the, the, the broad spectrum of, of knowledge. But most of our uh, people, or most of the lost sheep, they barely know English because they don't know who they are. They, they haven't been given a foundation that matches their, 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 their genotype, their, their DNA, their spiritual DNA. So they're walking around from the cradle to the grave lost. So being born again, according to Scripture, is, is, is not just a spiritual feeling, but the Bible says to study and show ourselves approved. And for us as Hebrews, since we are Ethiopian Hebrews, it's important to learn our Hebrew ciphers, the Hebrew ciphers. It makes no sense to go up into the 33 of the Amharic without having this basic foundation. You know what I mean? You have it in your Bible. You understand? It's right there in your Bible. And, and throughout the scripture, it's talking in that particular language. Become familiar with your lost language. Um, there's much more we want to say, but uh, one, one more thing on this subject. Two more things. We have an update on the Amharic Bible homeschooling. You understand the Amharic Bible homeschooling. For those who are interested, this is, a, this is an update. Um, then we also have the Mizmura Dawi, the Psalm of David, side by side, the King James, the King James Version, side by side with Haile Selassie, the first Bible, with um, the Royal Amharic, the Book of the Seven Seals from Mizmura Dawi. And even in, in our particular um, copy right here, or in the, in, in the Parallel Bible, as we call it, the Parallel Bible version, we bring this up. When you go to Psalm 119, let's get to Psalm 119 so we can at least demonstrate this. We made it a little bit larger here because we already foresaw that it would be needed. It would be needed. Um, here we go, Ray. Just bear with me. Here we go. Okay, and you can see how, because the King James is, is inconsistent in some places. So you can see right here how we have Aleph. You know, you see the Hebrew. You see the transliteration. If you go down here to, over here to Beit, you have Beit right there. You understand? And plus you have the Amharic, as you can see, the Amharic and the English side by side. And this is... Um, Highly recommended, um, is Mura Dawi. You understand the Psalms of David in Amharic and in the English. In other words, the King, the King James, you understand, meets the King of Kings. And one just recommend um, that, especially for for the disciples, brothers and sisters, and the daily Psalms also are covered there. And that gives you a good a good foundation, the basic basic discipleship books and study daily daily feedings um, would be Psalms 
and proverbs. You know what I'm saying? Psalms and proverbs are basic elementary, you know, are elementary books. You understand? Even to teach your children, even teaching your children, teach them the Psalms. A psalm, a psalm or so a day, as it's been said, but at least a psalm a day. And proverbs also gives them the wisdom. You understand? And and helps to give them the guidance, even though they may not understand it. Like many of us didn't understand when elders and older folks would say certain things they said to us. But if we lived long enough, you know, we begin to reflect on it and be like, oh, wow, now I get it. Give your children that gift that keeps on giving, and that is wisdom. But you as the parents and as the adults have to learn it first. We talk about doing all this for children, but we need to grow up adults. A lot of adults are not really grown up. So when they have children, you know what I'm saying, they can't really do too much. And then they throw the children back to the Gentiles, and we already see where that curse is leading. But come out of the curse, come to Jah Light, come to Jah Law, his Torah. And the first, the first step in learning the word is to learn the letters. You can't know words if you don't know the letters. The letters are the basic building blocks, the basic building blocks. And start out with the 2-2 of our Hebrew. So once again, brothers and sisters, Shalom, Ras, Tefari, Ene, Ras, Yadinos, Tefari, Ne, Shalom.